Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. I'm excited to have Dr. Justin Salomon on the show, an orthopedic surgeon specializing in sports medicine at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles. We're here to talk about an exciting new technology that he invented that is going to reshape the landscape of how we treat meniscus repairs. So there are two ways to repair this kind of injury, and removal or repair. So Dr. Salomon, tell us which way is better? Clearly it's better to repair these tears. So we used to remove most every meniscus tear in the past and uh, only repair the ones that looked like they were a sure thing for healing. And what we found is that in patients who had meniscus removal surgery, they end up with arthritis. And their knee is also less functional. And for a professional athlete, especially at a high elite level like Derek Rose, the, it's very important that you have these pieces of anatomy that register signals to the brain so that he can do the amazing dynamic things that you see him do on the court. So there's a lot of good reasons to preserve the meniscus, but the problem is our techniques that we've used in the past only work for certain tears and don't have the healing rates that we would like to see. It's one of the procedures that's more likely to fail that orthopedic surgeons perform. And so that's what I'm so excited to talk about is, is a way that we can hopefully improve the healing and improve the function of these repairs all at the same time. Well, give us an example of someone that you know who's a professional athlete that had their uh, meniscus removed and has subsequently suffered because of that. I mean, Brandon Roy is a perfect example of somebody who didn't make it back. And, and also, Dwayne Wade wrote, wrote an article a couple weeks ago on ESPN.com talking about how he, in 2002 he had, he had a meniscus tear and it was treated with removal and he wishes that he would have had that meniscus repaired. Um, now he, he struggles with his knee all the time and he's an amazing athlete, but I think he believes that he could be an even better athlete and he would have a longer career if he had had it sewn back together rather than removed. Well, today Derek Rose had his meniscus repaired in Chicago and um, I'm kind of curious, can you talk a little bit about what procedure they used? Are you familiar with what they did to fix it? Well, fortunately, they sewed it back together. You know, they repaired it rather than removed it, which is, uh, that's a good step forward in the right direction. Why has the uh, meniscus repair procedure over the last several years been, um, I don't want to say archaic, but what, what has prevented doctors from having more success with this kind of thing? That's a good question. So, you know, there's, there's a couple of different ways that have tr traditionally been used for meniscus repair. And these involve pushing needles through the tear and then tying it or locking it back to the capsule in the back of the knee. We've never had good ways to sew the meniscus to the meniscus and compress the tissue anatomically, line it up the way it was before it tore and compress it evenly throughout the entire tear region. That's something that has been very difficult to achieve until now. And what we've introduced is basically a technology where you can go in and sew it back together. As though you took the meniscus out of the knee and sewed it back together and then put it back into the knee. And it's going to make all the difference for these players being able to go back to sport at the same level of effectiveness as they had before they were injured. A good example is Adrian Peterson who had an ACL tear, but he didn't tear his meniscus. So his meniscus were pristine and he makes it back with an amazing recovery. And then other players who have meniscus problems never quite make it back to the same effectiveness. It's so common. And hopefully that it, as this device is used more and more, this new technology, we're going to find that these tears aren't a big deal because you can sew them back together. They're going to heal effectively, in my opinion, and they're going to function way better than they've ever, we've ever had meniscus repair function before. Can you, can you briefly describe how the actual instrument works and what it does to, to give you such great results? It's a really fun device. It, you, you hold it uh, sort of like a gun and there's a, lo a long stem that's smaller than a pencil that's inserted arthroscopically through the same two poke holes that you would remove the meniscus, you can now repair it. And that goes into the back of the knee and it changes shape once it's back there and it lets you sew, meaning put stitches back and forth in the meniscus. And you can sew it together in any way you think is best to compress that tissue together. Whereas before, we would push through the meniscus with needles and with implants and, and try and get it repaired that way. And a lot of the times, we were left with unsatisfactory and ineffective repairs. When a professional athlete tears their meniscus, they're going to have it repaired most often with something called inside out. And that's a very extensive procedure, but it's probably the best we can do short of this device. And then they have scarring and they have the incision. And it's a much more painful procedure and more scar tissue forms. And the meniscus is pulled out of the joint to some degree, in my opinion and rendered less function. It's held 
uh, stiffer. It doesn't move in the joint the way it used to. Well, looking at the, um, the fact that Derek Rose had his ACL torn and now he's got his meniscus in the other knee, um, is there any kind of connection that you might see as a, from your uh, you know, experience? Yeah, well, anytime you're rehabilitating from an injury, you probably protect that, that, that extremity a little more while, while you're playing. And it's possible that he was relying more on his left leg because his, his right leg uh, still wasn't functioning right. I'm not sure exactly what he had done in that surgery. I know he had an ACL. I'm not sure if there was anything performed on the meniscus or not. Um, but, but in the end, you know, perhaps he was protecting himself a little bit and it led him to, to this injury, although I don't have any specific evidence to that effect. Is it anything related to repetitive use? If he was feeling a little discomfort in, in the back of his knee or on the inside of his knee and then he decided to play through it, then yes, the repetitive, in, you know, you can propagate that tear into something that all of a sudden becomes a much bigger problem when the tear becomes much larger. Most of the tears that we remove, we consider them irreparable. But now with this new technology, we can sew these back together. And here's some examples of tears that most every surgeon in the country would have removed the meniscus. And now it's repairable in a way that really compresses the tissue together optimally for healing. So this is really exciting. An athlete has one of these tear types and these tear patterns. We can sew that baby back together and get them back to an elite professional level of, of participation where they have the important anatomy in their knee to make them function at that elite level that's so important. Dr. Salman, I think this was really enlightening and very exciting for the future of uh, knee surgery. Certainly, I know um, Derek Rose will most likely wish he could have had this procedure. Hopefully, his, the one he had today works out great. But when can we expect to start seeing this surgery happen uh, across the country to all the pro athletes? I'm presenting in Las Vegas next week um, at a big orthopedic meeting, and a lot of the uh, team physicians will be there. and. Uh, I expect and anticipate that they will adopt it quickly. This is simply, in my opinion, better patient care, and I think it'll be standard. So hopefully it's coming very soon to a professional athlete near you, and, uh, and thanks for having me. My pleasure, Dr. Salman. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, some real interesting insights into Derek Rose and everybody else uh, who uh, in their future might have this problem. So thanks for joining us, sports fans, and don't forget at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel, we're a conversation. You in? Oh.